In quest of a better life, men sought and found a new world. And in time, they formed a new nation dedicated to a better way of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Much money is lost through sending gold by coach from one country to another. In times of war, it is seized by the enemy. In times of peace, by thieves. You are five brothers. I want you each to start a banking business in a different country. One to go and open a house in Paris, one in Vienna, one in London. Choose the most important centers. So, that when money is to be sent from here to London, let us say, you won't have to risk life and gold. And so, here in Frankfurt, we'll just send a letter to Nathan in London saying, pay so-and-so. And that will be offset by loans from London to Frankfurt. Understand? Yes. In your day, there will be many wars in Europe. A nation that have money to transport will come to the lost chance because it will be safe. If Napoleon is to be beaten in the East, we must have 15 million florins immediately. And more later. I think it can be done, Prince Metternich. But I shall have to consult with my brother Nathan in London. Come, come, Solomon. Can't you decide now? Your Highness is aware that the Rothschilds work as a family. And we have made Nathan our head. Sixteen million ducats. As soon as possible. If your Highness will keep the utmost secrecy, I will endeavor to obtain the consent of my brothers. How difficult it is for the Paris House of Rothschild to help the Allies against Napoleon. My dear Monsieur James, I will be as secret as the grave. But we must have 50 million francs. Quite aware of that answer, Rothschild. I wish no one to hear of it. Only necessity brings me here. The armies of Napoleon are already in Prussia. We've got to have five million golden to drive them out. I will consult my brother. Ah, that's nonsense. It is an unbreakable rule, Your Excellency. The House of Rothschild never participates in a deal of this importance without the approval of all the parts. Once, my friend. That is impossible. My brother Nathan in London is the problem. But during this period, many things have happened. You've been most just. I'm glad to say that the major too. part of them have greatly sure helped the well-being of the average the citizen. The House of Rothschild is already In the short space of these few months, I am convinced that at least four millions have been given employment. Or saying it another way, 40% of those seeking work have found it. That does not mean, my friends, that I am satisfied or that you are satisfied that our work is ended. We have a long way to go, but we are on the way. We come to the relief for a moment of those who are in danger of losing their farms or their homes. I have publicly asked that the foreclosure on farms and chattels and homes be delayed until every mortgagor in the country has closed. The hour of the trial has come. And I make the further request that if there is any family in the United States about to lose its home or its farm, that family should telegraph at once, either to the Farm Credit Administration or the Home Loan Corporation in Washington requesting their help. I do not hesitate to say that although the prices of many products... Well, across the Rhine... You will ist uns verschrieben und verfallen mit Leib! A delirious madness possessed the German nation.
Men from the hills and from the plains, from the villages and from the cities, bookkeepers, soda jerks, mechanics, college students, rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief, doctor, lawyer, merchant, chief, now veteran fighting men. Yet two years ago, many had never fired a gun or seen the ocean or been off the ground. There is a phrase which recurs in our national documents. The literature of our story as a people, which points to the source of our belief in individual freedom. And defines perhaps better than any other, the nub of the conflict between the opposing systems of values which sweep the world today. That phrase is, this nation under God. That phrase and others like it set the standard of our concept of man. As a creature of God, man is a being with dignity and conscience. Meet Joe, the king the of the workers of the world. The right. Hi, Paul. From this belief in man as a responsible being flow the beliefs in his other qualifications which we accept usually even without bothering to think about them as parts of that vague condition which we call the American way. Now, what makes it possible for Joe to earn such a good living? He's no smarter than workers in other countries. Are you the committed nations of the world. He's represented no in gray in on the lands. Oh, yeah. For the most part, We've these nations are absorbed with their own problems. Either they are newly independent after years of domination by a foreign oh. power. Just because Joe's an American doesn't mean... Yeah? Well, being an American is the best thing in the... Oh! My back! Sure, being an American is great. But how could you be superior to any foreigner when you or your folks might be any one of a dozen different races or religions? So I've been told you knew about Napoleon's abdication two days before the War Office did. Is that true? Yes. But then the War Office never knows anything for two days after everybody else knows it. Yes, <laughs> and then they take two more days thinking it over. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you do it? They say Indians get things by putting their ears to the ground. Most of the investment <laughs> capital Indian, that buys yeah, the tools no, you use comes Jerusalem. from your fellow Americans. Forty million of us have money in the banks. Seventy million of us own insurance policies. When I just heard this one, they are going to float a tax loan to put France on her feet. Over An enormous million of us invest The biggest thing ever issued. Yes? Well, they've got to do something. France has had 20 years of war and the whole country's torn up. But now they've got peace. They're going to get together. The five allied powers and help her out. The banking house that floats this loan will at once become the most powerful in Europe. Its prestige will be enormous. That's it. Now's your chance. Your Grace, I can't sufficient to thank you for this information. Mind you, it's a dash dark secret. I think I knew. We businessmen are not supposed to notice unimportant things like daughters and wives. They're working hard at it. Today, the 200 million inhabitants of the Soviet state bend their backs and their talents to the Kremlin's will. And Sputnik and Sputnik's successors have proved conclusively enough the USSR's proficiency in the area of technical ability. Throughout the vast stretches of this empire, you find new industrial cities, plants, assembly lines, the most modern equipment. Soviet products of every description awaiting delivery and reaching industrially backward areas of the non-communist world. Teams of Russian technicians are available to operate this machine. This is economic penetration, paving the way for political takeover. The hand of Soviet friendship, which usually precedes an attempt at economic penetration, has been reaching into every part of the world which shows the slightest inclination to receive it. Recently, we've seen it extend into our own hemisphere, into turbulent Cuba, where it was embraced as a triumph of Soviet policy. A few statistics will demonstrate how serious this threat is becoming to the free world. Of the entire annual Soviet economic capability, their gross national product, 
70% or it may run as high as a byproduct of the nation's reactor piles is radioactive isotopes. Research has revealed that many elements not naturally radioactive became so when placed in a nuclear reactor. And these isotopes, working as tracers with such measuring devices as a Geiger counter, became invisible detectives, aiding the cause of science in many different fields. In agriculture, isotopes are now used to test such things as the effect of fertilizers on plant growth and the proper timing for their use, helping to assure bigger and better yields from tomorrow's farms. in the desert held vital information on how to survive an enemy attack. With Geiger counters to check the radiation, experts assessed the damage. An aluminum building was left a gaping wreck. Concrete or cinder block houses weathered the blast best. This one was less than a mile away. Survival Town's electric wires have become a twisted, tangled mass. Demonstrating the importance of civil defense preparedness, the elaborate exercises proved survival is possible, offering new hope to all who live in the shadow of the atomic age. On the sandy wastes at Yucca Flat, Nevada, a new series of atomic explosions are set off. Tanks are among the obsolete pieces of army equipment being tested in the exercises called Operation Teapot. More than 9,000 servicemen have been assembled at the proving grounds, ready to take their places in forward trenches. In a grim new age of warfare, today's fighting men must be taught survival on an atomic battlefield. While the troops take cover, the Army's giant new 100-inch camera is pointed toward the blast tower. Men intensely eye the control. 